Welcome to episode 10 of the Worship Online Podcast. I want to remind all of you guys that we're giving away a free Worship Online subscription. Just go to worshiponline.com slash podcast and enter your email at the link at the very top. And we've already given away some free subscriptions for an entire year, so you could be next. And I also want to remind you to leave a review. We got some awesome reviews here recently, and I just want to read uh, just one or two of them. This is, my technical musicianship grew by leaps and bounds when I had a subscription to the tutorial side of Worship Online, and I'm very excited in anticipation of what this podcast will achieve with regards to the spiritual side of my worship team involvement. The first few podcasts were very encouraging, and indeed, you guys genuinely seem to have every having a lot of fun in the studio recording each episode. With the great content, humor, and love of Jesus, this podcast really is essential listening for any aspiring worship musician. Cheers, guys. Man. That was from Tim um, from North Virginia. What up, Tim? Tim, thank Dang. you so much. That You're was awesome. Leave a review, and awesome. um, if it's as good as Tim's, we'll read it here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Way all to right, go, Tim. Let's roll that intro. All right, we're back. It's episode 10 here on the Worship Online Podcast. Uh, my name is Brenton. I'm a worship leader and producer here in Nashville. And this is Shaylin, the I'm founder and president, <laughs> CEO, director of Worship Online, and all the <laughs> other titles. Yeah, great. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, You're but so nice. We, we had uh, someone uh, just write in and they were like, hey, it would be nice, you know, as we're listening to kind of know who you guys are too. Yeah. So um, we'll try to make that a little bit more of a point. But we want to give a quick shout out before we start to our top three cities mm -hmm. listening to the worship online what? podcast so everyone in los angeles houston texas and nashville thank you for tuning in and then also uh there's a lot more cities like dc san fran atlanta but thanks for tuning into the worship online podcast from all over the country yeah. all over the world um we've got people in canada the uk australia tuning in so thanks for making Dang. worship online part of your life on the podcast so Man. uh today we're talking about uh something that i think all of us have uh, walked through, experienced, mm -hmm. and something that we try to stay away from as much as possible, and that is trying to avoid train wrecks during your worship set. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and this is just a great tip for new worship team members, or really anyone. And mm. um, the original idea was new worship team members, but I think this is great for anyone, because we've all been there and just like maybe listening to a set or you have a band mm. member or even yourself i know i've been there and you just hear you're playing and you hear something horrible <laughs> just some just goes wrong well and nobody likes a train wreck exactly nobody <laughs> likes a train wreck um whether it's at the very beginning of a set mm -hmm. or especially when you're in the middle of a set yeah. or towards the end of a set yep. the beginning is always when you get a rocky start all right whatever but if everything's going great and something just completely falls apart um, how can you avoid those things? So we're going to yep. dive in to ways to kind of stay away from it yeah. um, um, or defaults. We're going to talk about some defaults yeah. where it's like you, typically you won't have a train wreck if you default and if everybody knows to default the right way. Yeah. So uh, one of the things we've come up with that cause these kind of errors when you're playing is, and, and some of them are just genuine. Some of them maybe weren't paying attention or just something small like something, but a lot of these errors can be boiled down to, I think, to uh, maybe attempting something that might be outside of your skill level. Mm. Because I know as an electric guitar player, I might hear a riff or something and I want to play it. I want to play it all the time and, and the same and for everyone. And so sometimes though, that riff might not be quite your skill level. And so, um, it might not be the best thing to try to attempt it. And I think that's a that's a good advice mm -hmm. um, for worship team members to maybe stay, try to play something that's more in your skill level live. Practice at home. Um, obviously, stretch yourself at home, but when it comes time to rehearsal and actually playing something live, try to stick to your skill level because, yeah. trust me, it sounds way better to play something a little simpler mm -hmm. Um great and yeah. no one's going to notice a thing they're going to say no man gonna that notice. sounded awesome yes then it does to to stretch yourself and even you might not completely mess up something but to fumble through and not really nail something and it just sounds bad and not off it tr sounds way better to play something great simple than to mess up through something a little bit more difficult yeah it's definitely um you want to lean on your strengths 
And um, I just had that experience recently where I was playing and I'd been practicing a lot of different things, but I was like in the heat of the moment. And you know what that means, the heat of the moment yeah. <laughs> when you're, you know, everyone's there, you're live. It's it's not in your bedroom, you know, playing through all your rig. Mm-hmm. It's just now I'm with everyone. It's it's different. It's a different vibe. It's a different feel. Yeah. The heat is on in, in, so to speak. And obviously we go on and on so many rabbit trails yep. on this podcast because <laughs> there's so many but yeah things. exactly but um it, when it comes to playing there were just moments in my head where it's like i, I really want to play something cool here. yeah yeah and i was like but i don't think i will yeah <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> i'm gonna stick to something yeah, that yeah. works yeah that i know works that i've tried and yep. tested works um yeah and no one's gonna know the difference anyways yep. um but uh, the, at the end of the day, I think what it comes down to is, are we facilitating encounters with Jesus? Yeah. That's, if that's always the goal, yep. then that's where you can kind of push towards you're at the end of the day, you're yep. not trying to get, man, that was a sick lick. Yeah. It was, did you encounter Jesus and how are we helping facilitate that? Mm-hmm. And maybe there is something beautiful that inspires creativity, that inspires this, you know, all inspiring moment for somebody. Mm-hmm. But, um, at the end of the day, what's the motive? What's really kind of the heart behind it? Yeah. And those are good things to actually think through, even in the heat of the moment. Yeah. How am I helping this atmosphere? How am I helping grow this whole yeah. thing versus showing off or trying to just better myself? Yeah. Because you know? as soon as it becomes, oh, I want to impress my girlfriend out in the congregation <laughs> exactly. with this guitar riff or this vocal, awesome vocal harmony, yep. that's when it becomes about you and doesn't isn't about the band anymore you're not thinking right. about what's going to work better in this situation and, right. and you might have to think you know and not that i'm like me and you are like the all-knowing you know you guys oh, play man. to your skill level yeah. we can do it but that uh, kind of i'm not saying i have those moments too <laughs> like because like sometimes i have to sing on stage and i yeah. don't that's why i don't do the vocal tutorials because i don't consider myself a great singer mm. so i'm not going to attempt some crazy harmony part. I know better. I'm just going to sing the melody because I stay in my lane. It's yeah. much better. I've obviously, I practice at home, but it's going to be much better. It's going to facilitate worship. Mm. It's not going to distract people. It's just going to sound overall better. No one's going to come up and I'm not going to get applause afterwards <laughs> saying, oh, you did so amazing. But I'm also not going to have no one come up to me and say, wow, that was horrible. Right. Because <laughs> um, because I just, I stayed there, you know? I, yeah. I knew. Staying I, in your lane is a good, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. Because it's you're playing to your strength, but you're also playing with the team. Yeah. So everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing nine times out of ten or more. Um, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. And you're not going to have these big train wrecks. Um, obviously, you want to challenge yourself. You want to push yourself. Um, and you can do that in the right settings. You can do that in a practice. Yeah. You can do that in a rehearsal. You can try new things together as a team, you know, or maybe you all try something. Yeah. Um, but uh, that goes into practicing too as a team. Yeah. You know, maybe you're going to try to do this crazy bridge lick all together with yeah. a bunch of crazy hits and everybody's going to do it at the same time. And you run through it one time before service probably yeah. a high chance it's not yeah, gonna work yeah. you know yeah <laughs> so you got to be intentional about it you got to yeah. communicate you actually have to put time in together and mm-hmm. practice it together otherwise you could have some train wreck moments yeah and that takes some wisdom too to be able to say maybe we're not quite ready to pull this off like as a <laughs> as a leader because like, i've yeah. been in band rehearsals with the band and maybe i knew the part great but as a whole band like we just weren't nailing something mm. and it took the wisdom of our band leader to be like all right we're just not gonna do that let's just move on we're on a time whatever it, that took some wisdom because he knew better like well, let's yeah. just let's not like even it wasn't perfect so we're not going to attempt that like during rehearsal yeah it just takes wisdom and even if it's your part personally like you're playing guitar or something or singing or you just have to have wisdom and the first step is is taking a good look at yourself like where where are you at skill level right and that and i think even if you want to get better uh, i think it's a good idea to know where you're at so you can always yeah go you don't know where you're going if you don't know know where you're at well so. that's true and, and i think as it relates to train wrecks specifically train wrecks when yeah. i think train wrecks it's like let's stop the song and start over yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, a train yeah. wreck is not oh the guy accidentally hit a wrong note yeah, we have yeah. to stop everything it's like when the whole band doesn't know what's yeah. going on and i think that that goes back to leadership mm-hmm. and communication most yeah. of the time it's 
it's communication. Yeah. It's simply either the director called something different than the worship leader yeah. or the worship leader cued something that he didn't mean to, or somebody read something wrong. Communication is yep. huge as it relates yep. to being on stage together in flow. Um, you know, coming up next week, we're going to be talking um, with somebody who was with Elevation for a long time. Yeah. And we were talking about, it's cool because we were kind of preliminary, kind of going through what we're talking about. And it was so fun to hear um, just some of the behind the scenes on how they sync up all their campuses. Yeah. So we're going to talk all about that. But I was thinking like, man, talk about train wrecks. Like oh. what happens when you're, yes. when you're like over 13, 14 campuses, yes. you know, something like that. But communication and learning what works for yeah. your team, learning what cues work for yeah. your team is really important. Because I think you could look at this, say like avoiding train wrecks. Yeah, you, We're not trying to create any sort of insecurity and like yeah. where you're second guessing yourself. If anything, we're saying learn to be confident yeah. in who you are. Um, my band director, uh, this is kind of going another direction, but my band director growing up would always say, if you're going to mess up, mess up big. You oh, know, because yeah. he, he would, you'd much rather have somebody like a confident player who's yeah. playing out front and, and knowing what they're doing yeah. well and screw up yeah. than just be timid the whole time. You yeah. know, so it's not like you want to always be second guessing mm -hmm. yourself, but just communication, practice, and confidence, building and growing in your strengths is important. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's so good. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to avoid train wrecks at all costs, yeah. all right? <laughs> I can't pitch episode seven, which was practice. Okay, yeah, so go right. listen to episode seven there you to go. practice. And I mean, it does take a lot of humility, you know, mm. to... to to be there and to know, yeah. you know, maybe I don't, I practice this riff all week at home, yeah. but it's not quite there. I'm yeah. going to save it and I'm just going to humble myself and I'm going to play a very simple, simplified part yeah. of that. And, and, and too, like, what are the things that you're practicing that you, that you can do? You know, yeah. like maybe there's a really cool lick, but you can only play like 10% of it. Yeah. Well then what can you add to a song? You know, we were even talking about, you, you mentioned this, I think before we even started, like going into playing it exactly like the record well yeah. if you can't play it exactly like the record can you try to match the melody in a way that's not so complicated yeah. or can you try to play it close yeah but a way that you feel confident yeah. you know those are all things that are, are really important i think to young musicians and mature musicians um the more we record worship music and the more the church advances and the, the better the musicians the more complicated the parts yeah um and that's okay um but stay in your lane stay confident in where you're at and it's it's you won't have a train wreck. Yeah, I agree. Dude. I think that sums it up. Awesome. We killed it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. So humble. <laughs> we are so humble, which was episode, Whatever. I don't even remember. The last one. The humbleness <laughs> yeah. was one, one of the episodes. Oh my word. But yeah, that's awesome. Um, So on that note, we are giving away a free worship online subscription. Yes, we are. We mentioned it at the beginning of the episode, but if you want to get a free worship online subscription and learn all those parts that are hidden in the mix and buried in the mix and that make really do make a really huge impact on the song, but you can't sometimes pick them out by ear or you want to learn all those difficult riffs, I could go on for days. But we're you giving away a online. free subscription. That's all um, right. That's awesome. For that, at, just go to worshiponline.com slash podcast. Just enter your email by clicking sign up to the email list at the top and expect an email and just be confident you're going to get it from us that you're going to win a free year <laughs> subscription um, yes and while you're at it leave us a review and, and yes. check it out all the links are there everything's in the show notes so thanks for being with us here on episode 10 and uh, we'll see you next time